Murasaki Shikibu. Heian women were traditionally excluded from learning Chinese, the written language of government, but Murasaki, raised in her erudite father's household, showed a precocious aptitude for the Chinese classics and managed to acquire fluency. She married in her mid to late twenties and gave birth to a daughter before her husband died, two years after they were married. It is uncertain when she began to write the tale of Genji, but it was probably while she was married or shortly after she was widowed. In about 1005, Murasaki was invited to serve as a lady-in-waiting to Empress Shoshi at the imperial court, probably because of her reputation as a writer. She continued to write during her service, adding scenes from court life to her work. After five or six years, she left court and retired with Shoshi to the Lake Biwa region. Scholars differ on the year of her death, although most agree on 1014, others have suggested she was alive in 1031. Murasaki wrote the diary of Lady Murasaki, a volume of poetry, and the tale of Genji. Within a decade of its completion, Genji was distributed throughout the provinces, within a century it was recognized as a classic of Japanese literature and had become a subject of scholarly criticism. Early in the 20th century her work was translated, a six-volume English translation was completed in 1933. Scholars continue to recognize the importance of her work, which reflects Heian court society at its peak. Since the 13th century her works have been illustrated by Japanese artists and well-known ukiyo-e blockmasters. Murasaki Shikipu was born circa 973 in Heian Kyo, Japan, into the northern Fujiwara clan descending from Fujiwara no Yoshifusa, the first 9th century Fujiwara regent. The Fujiwara clan dominated court politics until the end of the 11th century through strategic marriages of Fujiwara daughters into the imperial family and the use of regencies. In the late 10th century and early 11th century, Fujiwara no Mishinaga arranged his four daughters into marriages with emperors, giving him unprecedented power. Murasaki's great-grandfather, Fujiwara no Kinesuke, had been in the top tier of the aristocracy, but her branch of the family gradually lost power and by the time of Murasaki's birth was at the middle to lower ranks of the Heian aristocracy, the level of provincial governors. The lower ranks of the nobility were typically posted away from court to undesirable positions in the provinces, exiled from the centralized power in court in Kyoto. Despite the loss of status, the family had a reputation among the literati through Morisaki's paternal great-grandfather and grandfather, both of whom were well-known poets. Her great-grandfather, Fujiwara no Kinesuke, had 56 poems included in 13 of the 21 imperial anthologies, the collections of 36 poets and the Imato Monogatari. Her great-grandfather and grandfather both had been friendly with Kino Shuryuki, who became notable for popularizing verse written in Japanese. Her father, Fujiwara no Tamitoki, attended the State Academy and became a well-respected scholar of Chinese classics and poetry, his own verse was anthologized. He entered public service around 968 as a minor official and was given a governorship in 996. He stayed in service until about 1018. Murasaki's mother was descended from the same branch of northern Fujiwara as Tamitoki. The couple had three children, a son and two daughters. In the Heian era the use of names, insofar as they were recorded, did not follow a modern pattern. A court lady, as well as being known by the title of her own position, if any, took a name referring to the rank or title of a male relative. Thus Shikibu is not a modern surname, but refers to Shikibu SHO, the Ministry of Ceremonials where Murasaki's father was a functionary. Murasaki, an additional name possibly derived from the color violet associated with wisteria, the meaning of the word Fuji may have been bestowed on her at court in reference to the name she herself had given to the main female character in Genji. Mishinaga mentions the names of several ladies-in-waiting in a 1007 diary entry, 1, Fujiwara no Takako, maybe Morisaki's personal name. In Heian-era Japan, husbands and wives kept separate households, children were raised with their mothers, although the patrilineal system was still followed. Morisaki was unconventional because she lived in her father's household most likely on Teramachi Street in Kyoto, with her younger brother Nobu Nori. Their mother died, perhaps in childbirth, when the children were quite young. Murasaki had at least three half-siblings raised with their mothers, she was very close to one sister who died in her twenties. Murasaki was born at a period when Japan was becoming more isolated, after missions to China had ended and a stronger national culture was emerging. In the 9th and 10th centuries, Japanese gradually became a written language through the development of kana, a syllabary based on abbreviations of Chinese characters. 
in Murasaki's lifetime men continued to write in Chinese, the language of government, but kana became the written language of noble women, setting the foundation for unique forms of Japanese literature. Chinese was taught to Murasaki's brother as preparation for a career in government, and during her childhood, living in her father's household, she learned and became proficient in classical Chinese. In her diary she wrote, When my brother, was a young boy learning the Chinese classics, I was in the habit of listening to him and I became unusually proficient at understanding those passages that he found too difficult to understand and memorize. Father, a most learned man, was always regretting the fact, just my luck, he would say, what a pity she was not born a man. With her brother she studied Chinese literature, and she probably also received instruction in more traditional subjects such as music, calligraphy and Japanese poetry. Murasaki's education was unorthodox. Louis Perez explains in the history of Japan that women, were thought to be incapable of real intelligence and therefore were not educated in Chinese. Murasaki was aware that others saw her as pretentious, awkward, difficult to approach, prickly, too fond of her tales, haughty, prone to versifying, disdainful, cantankerous and scornful. Asian literature scholar Thomas Inga believes she had a forceful personality that seldom won her friends. Aristocratic Heian women lived restricted and secluded lives, allowed to speak to men only when they were close relatives or household members. Murasaki's autobiographical poetry shows that she socialized with women but had limited contact with men other than her father and brother, she often exchanged poetry with women but never with men. Unlike most noble women of her status, she did not marry on reaching puberty, instead she stayed in her father's household until her mid-twenties or perhaps even to her early thirties. In 996 when her father was posted to a four-year governorship in Echizen province, Morisaki went with him, although it was uncommon for a noblewoman off the period to travel such a distance on a trip that could take as long as five days. She returned to Kyoto, probably in 998, to marry her father's friend Fujiwara no Nobutaka, a much older second cousin. Descended from the same branch of the Fujiwara clan, he was a court functionary and bureaucrat at the Ministry of Ceremonials with a reputation for dressing extravagantly and as a talented dancer. In his late forties at the time of their marriage, he had multiple households with an unknown number of wives and offspring. Gregarious and well-known at court, he was involved in numerous romantic relationships that may have continued after his marriage to Morisaki. As was customary, she would have remained in her father's household where her husband would have visited her. No Butaka had been granted more than one governorship, and by the time of his marriage to Morisaki he was probably quite wealthy. Accounts of their marriage vary. Richard Boring writes that the marriage was happy, but Japanese literature scholar Haruo Shirain sees indications in her poems that she resented her husband. The couple's daughter, Kenshi, was born in 999. Two years later Nobutaka died during a cholera epidemic. As a married woman Morisaki would have had servants to run the household and care for her daughter giving her ample leisure time. She enjoyed reading and had access to romances such as The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter and The Tales of Eyes. Scholars believe she may have started writing The Tale of Genji before her husband's death, it is known she was writing after she was widowed, perhaps in a state of grief. In her diary she describes her feelings after her husband's death, I felt depressed and confused. For some years I had existed from day to day in listless fashion, doing little more than registering the passage of time. The thought of my continuing loneliness was quite unbearable. According to legend, Murasaki retreated to Ishiyamadera at Lake Biwa, where she was inspired to write the tale of Genji on an August night while looking at the moon. Although scholars dismiss the factual basis of the story of her retreat, Japanese artists often depicted her at Ishiyama Temple staring at the moon for inspiration. She may have been commissioned to write the story and may have known an exiled courtier in a similar position to her hero Prince Genji. Morisaki would have distributed newly written chapters of Genji to friends who in turn would have recopied them and passed them on. By this practice, the story became known and she gained a reputation as an author. In her early to mid 30s, she became a lady in waiting at court, most likely because of her reputation as an author. Chieko Mulhern writes in Japanese Women Writers a biocritical sourcebook that scholars have wondered why Morisaki made such a move at a comparatively late period in her life. Her diary evidences that she exchanged poetry with Michinaga after her husband's death, leading to speculation that the two may have been lovers. Boring sees no evidence that she was brought to court as Michinaga's concubine, although he did bring her to court without following official channels. Mulhern thinks Michinaga wanted to have Morisaki at court to educate his daughter Shoshi. 
Heian culture and port life reached a peak early in the 11th century. The population of Kyoto grew to around 100,000 as the nobility became increasingly isolated. The Heian palace and government posts and court service. Courtiers became overly refined with little to do, insulated from reality, preoccupied with the minutiae of court life, turning to artistic endeavors. Emotions were commonly expressed through the artistic use of textiles, fragrances, calligraphy, colored paper, poetry, and layering of clothing in pleasing color combinations, according to mood and season. Those who showed an inability to follow conventional aesthetics quickly lost popularity, particularly at court. Popular pastimes for Heian noble women, who adhered to rigid fashions of floor-length hair, whitened skin and blackened teeth, included having love affairs, writing poetry and keeping diaries. The literature that Heian court women wrote is recognized as some of the earliest and among the best literature written in the Japanese canon. When in 995 Mishinaga's two brothers Fujiwara no Mishitaka and Fujiwara no Mishikane died leaving the regency vacant, Mishinaga quickly won a power struggle against his nephew Fujiwara no Karichika, and, aided by his sister Senshi, he assumed power. Taishi had supported her brother Karichika, who was later discredited and banished from court causing her to lose power. Four years later Mishinaga sent Shoshi, his eldest daughter, to Emperor Richijo's harem when she was about 12. A year after placing Shoshi in the imperial harem, in an effort to undermine Taishi's influence and increase Shoshi's standing, Mishinaga had her named Empress although Taishi already held the title. As historian Donald Shively explains, Mishinaga shocked even his admirers by arranging for the unprecedented appointment of Taishi and Shoshi as concurrent empresses of the same emperor. Taishi holding the usual title of lustrous air bearer Kogo and Shoshi that of Inner Palatine, a toponymically derived equivalent coined for the occasion. About five years later, Mishinaga brought Morisaki to Shoshi's court, in a position that Borin describes as a companion tutor. Women of high status lived in seclusion at court and, through strategic marriages, were used to gain political power for their families. Despite their seclusion, some women wielded considerable influence, often achieved through competitive salons, dependent on the quality of those attending. Ichicho's mother and Mishinaga's sister, Senshi, had an influential salon, and Mishinaga probably wanted Shoshi to surround herself with skilled women such as Morisaki to build a rival salon. Shoshi was 16 to 19 when Morisaki joined her court. According to Arthur Whaley, Shoshi was a serious minded young lady whose living arrangements were divided between her father's household and her court at the imperial palace. She gathered around her talented women writers such as Azumi Shikibu and Akazo Maimon, the author of an early vernacular history, The Tale of Flowering Fortunes. The rivalry that existed among the women is evident in Morisaki's diary, where she wrote disparagingly of Izumi. Izumi Shikibu is an amusing letter writer, but there is something not very satisfactory about her. She has a gift for dashing off informal compositions in a careless running hand, but in poetry she needs either an interesting subject or some classic model to imitate. Indeed, it does not seem to me that in herself she is really a poet at all. Sei Shonagon, author of the Pillow Book, had been in service as lady in waiting to Taishi when Shoshi came to court. It is possible that Morisaki was invited to Shoshi's court as a rival to Shonagon. Taishi died in 1001 before Morisaki entered service with Shoshi, so the two writers were not there concurrently, but Morisaki, who wrote about Shonagon in her diary, certainly knew of her, and to an extent was influenced by her. Shonagon's The Pillow Book may have been commissioned as a type of propaganda to highlight Taishi's court, known for its educated ladies-in-waiting. Japanese literature scholar Joshua Mostow believes Mishinaga provided Morisaki to Shoshi as an equally or better educated woman, so as to showcase Shosha's court in a similar manner. The two writers had different temperaments, Shonagon was witty, clever, and outspoken, Murasaki was withdrawn and sensitive. Entries in Murasaki's diary show that the two may not have been on good terms. Murasaki wrote, Say Shonagon, was dreadfully conceited. She thought herself so clever, littered her writing with Chinese characters, which, left a great deal to be desired. King thinks that Morisaki's impression of Shonagon could have been influenced by Shoshi and the women at her court because Shonagon served Shoshi's rival empress. Furthermore, he believes Morisaki was brought to court to write Genji in response to Shonagon's popular pillow book. Murasaki contrasted herself to Shonagon in a variety of ways. She denigrated the pillow book genre and, unlike Shonagon who flaunted her knowledge of Chinese, Murasaki pretended to not know the language. Although the popularity of the Chinese language diminished in the late Heian era, 
Chinese ballads continued to be popular, including those written by Bei Juyi. More Hisaki taught Chinese to Shoshi, who was interested in Chinese art and Juyi's ballads. Upon becoming empress, Shoshi installed screens decorated with Chinese script, causing outrage because written Chinese was considered the language of men. Far removed from the women's quarters. The study of Chinese was thought to be unladylike and went against the notion that only men should have access to the literature. Women were supposed to read and write only in Japanese, which separated them through language from government and the power structure. Morisaki, with her unconventional classical Chinese education, was one of the few women available to teach Shoshi classical Chinese. Boring writes it was almost subversive that Morisaki knew Chinese and taught the language to Shoshi. Murasaki, who was reticent about her Chinese education, held the lessons between the two women in secret, writing in her diary, since last summer, very secretly, in odd moments when there happened to be no one about, I have been reading with Her Majesty, there has of course been no question of formal lessons, I have thought it best to say nothing about the matter to anybody. Murasaki probably earned an ambiguous nickname, the Lady of the Chronicles. For teaching Shoshi Chinese literature. A lady in waiting who disliked Morisaki accused her of flaunting her knowledge of Chinese and began calling her the Lady of the Chronicles, an allusion to the classic Chronicles of Japan after an incident in which chapters from Genji were read aloud to the emperor and his courtiers, one of whom remarked that the author showed a high level of education. Murasaki wrote in her diary, How utterly ridiculous! Would I, who hesitate to reveal my learning to my women at home, ever think of doing so at court? Although the nickname was apparently meant to be disparaging, Mulhern believes Morisaki was flattered by it. The attitude toward the Chinese language was contradictory. In Taishi's court, Chinese had been flaunted and considered a symbol of imperial rule and superiority. Yet, in Shoshi's salon there was a great deal of hostility towards the language, perhaps owing to political expedience during a period when Chinese began to be rejected in favor of Japanese, even though Shoshi herself was a student of the language. The hostility may have affected Morisaki in her opinion of the court, and forced her to hide her knowledge of Chinese. Unlike Shonagon, who was both ostentatious and flirtatious, as well as outspoken about her knowledge of Chinese, Murasaki seems to have been humble, an attitude which possibly impressed Mishinaga. Although Murasaki used Chinese and incorporated it in her writing, she publicly rejected the language, a commendable attitude during a period of burgeoning Japanese culture. Murasaki seems to have been unhappy with court life and was withdrawn in somber. No surviving records show that she entered poetry competitions, she appears to have exchanged few poems or letters with other women during her service. In general, unlike Sei Shonakan, Murasaki gives the impression in her diary that she disliked court life, the other ladies in waiting, and the drunken revelry. She did, however, become close friends with a lady in waiting named Lady Saishu, and she wrote of the winters that she enjoyed. I love to see the snow here. According to Ailey, Murasaki may not have been unhappy with court life in general but bored in Shoshi's court. He speculates she would have preferred to serve with the Lady Senshi, whose household seems to have been less strict and more light-hearted. In her diary, Murasaki wrote about Shoshi's court, she, has gathered round her a number of very worthy young ladies, Her Majesty is beginning to acquire more experience of life, and no longer judges others be the same rigid standards as before but meanwhile her court has gained a reputation for extreme dullness. Murasaki disliked the men at court whom she thought to be drunken and stupid. However, some scholars, such as Whaley, are certain she was involved romantically with Mishinaga. At the least, Mishinaga pursued her and pressured her strongly, and her flirtation with him is recorded in her diary as late as 1010. Yet, she wrote to him in a poem, You have neither read my book, nor won my love. In her diary she records having to avoid advances from Mishinaga, one night he sneaked into her room, stealing a newly written chapter of Genji. However, Mishinaga's patronage was essential if she was to continue writing. Morisaki described his daughter's court activities, the lavish ceremonies, the complicated courtships, the complexities of the marriage system, and in elaborate detail, the birth of Shoshi's two sons. It is likely that Morisaki enjoyed writing in solitude. She believed she did not fit well with the general atmosphere of the court, writing of herself, I am wrapped up in the study of ancient stories, living all the time in a poetical world of my own scarcely realizing the existence of other people, but when they get to know me, they find to their extreme surprise that I am kind and gentle. Inga says that she was too outspoken to make friends at court, and Mulhern thinks Morisaki's court life was comparatively quiet compared to other court poets.
Mulhern speculates that her remarks about Izumi were not so much directed at Izumi's poetry but at her behavior, lack of morality and her court liaisons, of which Morisaki disapproved. Rank was important in Heian court society and Morisaki would not have felt herself to have much, if anything, in common with the higher-ranked and more powerful Fujiwaras. In her diary, she wrote of her life at court, I realized that my branch of the family was a very humble one, but the thought seldom troubled, and I was in those days far indeed from the painful consciousness of inferiority which makes life at court a continual torment to me. A court position would have increased her social standing, but more importantly she gained a greater experience to write about that court life, as she experienced it, is well reflected in the chapters of Genji written after she joined Shoshi. The name Morisaki was most probably given to her at a court dinner in an incident she recorded in her diary, in circa 1008 the well-known court poet Fujiwara no Kinto inquired after the young Morisaki an allusion to the character named Morisaki and Genji which would have been considered a compliment from a male court poet to a female author. When Emperor Ichijo died in 1011, Shoshi retired from the imperial palace to live in a Fujiwara mansion in Biwa, most likely accompanied by Morisaki who is recorded as being there with Shoshi in 1013. George Aston explains that when Murasaki retired from court she was again associated with Ishi Yamadera, to this beautiful spot, it is said, Murasaki no Shikibu retired from court life to devote the remainder of her days to literature and religion. There are skeptics, however, Motor Ori being one, who refuse to believe this story, pointing out, that it is irreconcilable with known facts. On the other hand, the very chamber in the temple where the Genji was written is shown, with the ink slab which the author used, and a Buddha sutra in her handwriting, which, if they do not satisfy the critic, still are sufficient to carry conviction to the minds of ordinary visitors to the temple. Murasaki may have died in 1014. Her father made a hasty return to Kyoto from his post at Echigo province that year, possibly because of her death. Writing in A Bridge of Dreams, a poetics of the tale of Genji, Shirin mentions that 1014 is generally accepted as the date of Morisaki Shikipu's death and 973 as the date of her birth, making her 41 when she died. Boring considers 1014 to be speculative, and believes she may have lived with Shoshi until as late as 1025. Whaley agrees given that Morisaki may have attended ceremonies with Shoshi held for her son, Emperor Goichijo around 1025. Murasaki's brother Nubonori died in around 1011, which, combined with the death of his daughter, may have prompted her father to resign his post and to Kevaus at Midera Temple where he died in 1029. Murasaki's daughter entered court service in 1025 as a wet nurse to the future Emperor Goreze. She went on to become a well-known poet as Daini no Sanmi. Three works are attributed to Murasaki, The Tale of Genji. The Diary of Lady Morisaki and Poetic Memoirs, a collection of 128 poems. Her work is considered important because her writing reflects the creation and development of Japanese writing during a period when Japanese shifted from an unwritten vernacular to a written language. Until the 9th century, Japanese language texts were written in Chinese characters using the Manyogana writing system. A revolutionary achievement was the development of kana a true Japanese script, in the mid to late 9th century. Japanese authors began to write prose in their own language, which led to genres such as tales and poetic journals. Historian Edwin Reischauer writes that genres such as the monogatari were distinctly Japanese and that Genji, written in kana, was the outstanding work of the period. Murasaki began her diary after she entered service at Shoshi's court. Much of what we know about her and her experiences at court comes from the diary which covers the period from about 1008 to 1010. The long descriptive passages, some of which may have originated as letters, cover her relationships with the other ladies-in-waiting, Mishinaga's temperament, the birth of Shoshi's sons, at Mishinaga's mansion rather than at the imperial palace, and the process of writing Genji, including descriptions of passing newly written chapters to calligraphers for transcriptions. Typical of contemporary court diaries written to honor patrons, Murasaki devotes half to the birth of Shoshi's son Emperor Goichijo, an event of enormous importance to Mishinaga, he had planned for it with his daughter's marriage which made him grandfather and de facto regent to an emperor. Poetic Memoirs is a collection of 128 poems Mulhern describes as arranged in a biographical sequence. The original set has been lost out according to custom, the verses would have been passed from person to person and often copied. Some appear written for a lover, possibly her husband before died, but she may have merely followed tradition and written simple love poems. They contain biographical details, 
she mentions a sister who died, the visit to Echis and province with her father and that she wrote poetry for Shoshi. Murasaki's poems were published in 1206 by Fujiwara and Otika, in what Mulhern believes to be the collection that is closest to the original form, at around the same time Tika included a selection of Murasaki's works in an imperial anthology, New Collections of Ancient and Modern Times. Murasaki is best known for her The Tale of Genji, a three-part novel spanning 1,100 pages and 54 chapters, which is thought to have taken a decade to complete. The earliest chapters were possibly written for a private patron either during her marriage or shortly after her husband's death. She continued writing while at court and probably finished while still in service to Shoshi. She would have needed patronage to produce a work of such length. Mishinaga provided her with costly paper and ink, and with calligraphers. The first handwritten volumes were probably assembled and bound by ladies in waiting. In his The Pleasures of Japanese Literature, Keen claims Morisaki wrote the supreme work of Japanese fiction by drawing on traditions of waka theories, and earlier monogatari, written in a mixture of Chinese script and Japanese script, such as The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter or The Tales of Eyes. She drew on and blended styles from Chinese histories, narrative poetry and contemporary Japanese prose. Adolfson writes that the juxtaposition of formal Chinese style with mundane subjects resulted in a sense of parody or satire, giving her a distinctive voice. Genji follows the traditional format of monogatari, telling a tale, particularly evident in its use of a narrator, but Keen claims Morisaki developed the genre far beyond its bounds, and by doing so created a form that is utterly modern. The story of the Shining Prince Genji is set in the late 9th to early 10th centuries, and Murasaki eliminated from it the elements of fairy tales and fantasy frequently found in earlier monogatari. The themes in Genji are common to the period, and are defined by Shively as encapsulating the tyranny of time and the inescapable sorrow of romantic love. The main theme is that of the fragility of life, the sorrow of human existence, Mano no aware she used the term over a thousand times in Genji. Keen speculates that in her tale of the Shining Prince, Murasaki may have created for herself an idealistic escape from court life, which she found less than savory. In Prince Genji she formed a gifted, comely, refined, yet human and sympathetic protagonist. Keen writes that Genji gives a view into the high period, for example love affairs flourished, although women typically remained unseen behind screens, curtains or fisuma. Helen McCulloch describes Morisaki's writing as of universal appeal and believes the tale of Genji transcends both its genre and age. Its basic subject matter and setting, love at the Heian court, are those of the romance, and its cultural assumptions are those of the mid Heian period, but Murasaki Shikibu's unique genius has made the work for many a powerful statement of human relationships, the impossibility of permanent happiness in love, and the vital importance, in a world of sorrows, of sensitivity to the feelings of others. Prince Genji recognizes in each of his lovers the inner beauty of the woman and the fragility of life, which according to Keen, makes him heroic. The story was popular, Emperor Ichijo had it read to him, even though it was written in Japanese. By 1021 all the chapters were known to be complete and the work was sought after in the provinces where it was scarce. Murasaki's reputation and influence have not diminished since her lifetime when she, with other Heian women writers, was instrumental in developing Japanese into a written language. Her writing was required reading for court poets as early as the 12th century as her work began to be studied by scholars who generated authoritative versions and criticism. Within a century of her death she was highly regarded as a classical writer. In the 17th century, Murasaki's work became emblematic of Confucian philosophy and women were encouraged to read her books. In 1673 Kumasawa Banzan argued that her writing was valuable for its sensitivity and depiction of emotions. He wrote in his discursive commentary on Genji that when human feelings are not understood the harmony of the five human relationships is lost. The tale of Genji was copied and illustrated in various forms as early as a century after Murasaki's death. The Genji Monogatari Imaki is a late Heian era 12th century hand scroll, consisting of four scrolls, 19 paintings, and 20 sheets of calligraphy. The illustrations, definitively dated to between 1110 and 1120, have been tentatively attributed to Fujiwara no Takachika and the calligraphy to various well known contemporary calligraphers. The scroll is housed at the Godo Museum and the Tokugawa Art Museum. Female virtue was tied to literary knowledge in the 17th century leading to a demand for Morisaki or Genji-inspired artifacts, known as Genji e. Dowry sets decorated with scenes from Genji or illustrations of Morisaki became particularly popular for noble women, 
in the 17th century Genji E symbolically imbued a bride with an increased level of cultural status, by the 18th century they had come to symbolize marital success. In 1628, Tokugawa Iemitsu's daughter had a set of lacquer boxes made for her wedding. Prince Tashida received a pair of silk Genji E screens, painted by Kano Tanyu as a wedding gift in 1649. Murasaki became a popular subject of paintings and illustrations highlighting her as a virtuous woman and poet. She is often shown at her desk in Nishimyama Temple, staring at the moon for inspiration. Tosumitsu Oki made her the subject of hanging scrolls in the 17th century. The tale of Genji became a favorite subject of Japanese Akiyo-e artists for centuries with artists such as Hirosuke, Kiyonaga, and Yudamaro illustrating various editions of the novel. While early Genji art was considered symbolic of court culture, by the middle of the Edo period the mass-produced Akiyo-e prints made the illustrations accessible for the samurai classes and commoners. In envisioning the tale of Genji Shirane observes that the tale of Genji has become many things to many different audiences through many different media over a thousand years, unmatched by any other Japanese text or artifact. The work and its author were popularized through its illustrations in various media, imaki, biobui, ukiyo-e, films, comics, and in the modern period, manga. In her fictionalized account of Morisaki's life, the tale of Morisaki, a novel, Liza Dalby has more Rosaki involved in a romance during her travels with her father to Echizen province. The tale of the Genji is recognized as an enduring classic. McCulloch writes that more Rosaki is both the quintessential representative of a unique society and a writer who speaks to universal human concerns with a timeless voice. Japan has not seen another such genius. Keen writes that the tale of Genji continues to captivate, because, in the story, her characters and their concerns are universal. In the 1920s, when Whaley's translation was published, reviewers compared Genji to Austin, Proust, and Shakespeare. Mulhern says of Morisaki that she is similar to Shakespeare, who represented his Elizabethan England, in that she captured the essence of the Heian court and as a novelist succeeded perhaps even beyond her own expectations. Like Shakespeare, her work has been the subject of reams of criticism and many books. Kyoto held a year-long celebration commemorating the 1000th anniversary of Genji in 2008, with poetry competitions, visits to the Tale of Genji Museum in Uji and Ishiyamadera, and women dressing in traditional 12-layered Heian court Junhiti and ankle-length hair wigs. The author and her work inspired museum exhibits and Genji manga spin-offs. The design on the reverse of the first 2000 yen note commemorated her in the Tale of Genji. A plant bearing purple berries has been named after her. A Genji album, only in the 1970s dated to 1510, is housed at Harvard University. The album is considered the earliest of its kind and consists of 54 paintings by Tosa Mitsunobu and 54 sheets of calligraphy on shikishi paper in five colors, written by master calligraphers. The leaves are housed in a case dated to that period, with a silk frontispiece painted by Tosa Mitsuoki, dated to around 1690. The album contains Mitsuoki's authentication slips for his ancestor apostrophe S 16th century paintings. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.